Well, hello, everybody. I hope you had a fabulous long weekend. Always fun to have a long weekend. And uh, we are excited. We are in a week four of the Lisa Long Ball Spring Tune-Up Clinics. So if you have missed any of my clinics, don't worry about it. You can go back. You can go back to the Golf Town Facebook page or YouTube channel or my Facebook page or YouTube channel at Lisa Long Ball and catch up. The uh, classes that we've covered so far, warm-up, grip, posture, all really important, uh, ball position, alignment, how the body is supposed to properly move, how you gain distance by creating coil and torque. So we've talked about turn the shirt, turn the pants, and we've talked about how we brush the grass and finish our golf swing. Well, this week, it's time to move on to my favorite club in the bag. And of course, that is driver, my very favorite club in the bag. So I'm super excited to talk about driver today and putting. They always say drive for show, putt for go, true, true, true. So we'll be talking about the, the the longest club in the bag and the shortest club in the bag. I just want to do a shout out. I see Nicole has joined us. Hi, hi, Nicole Borland. Nice to, that you've joined. And Sherry Bailey, howdy again from Texas. How do you know us Calgarians love our, our cowboy hats and our howdies. And I see Nathan has joined us. Tuesday clinic night. Woo! I'm glad that you're thrilled about it. And uh, Christiane, looking forward to seeing you at Golf Town tomorrow. Yes, I'm going to be at the Kelowna Golf Town tomorrow. I believe all the spots have sold out. It's free, but I believe it's all sold out. But I will be coming to Toronto. So for any of our viewers uh, who are in the Toronto area. Uh, I'm coming on Tuesday, May 3rd to Toronto at 6 p.m. to the Aurora store. So feel free to give the Aurora store a phone call and add your name to the list. I believe they'll take about 70 people. Um, so come join me live and in person if you're in that Toronto area. And again, that's at the Aurora store, the Aurora Golf Town. So, all right, well, let's get started. Let's talk driver. Now, first of all, the best thing to know about driver is everything that we've talked about so far, far absolutely helps with driver. Driver. And what would that be? That would be grip. We, of course, everything we've talked about with grip, ball position, posture, that's all important. Now, driver's ball position is a little different, but the grip and posture is absolutely key to hitting a good drive. If you suffer with not being able to get the distance you want, I guarantee one of your problems would probably be posture. So if you want to know my four uh, step process to posture, make sure you go back and watch that first video, all right? So with driver, all of those items uh, uh, pertain. And again, what we did last week, last week we talked about turn the shirt. We talked about breaking the body into two halves, the upper half of the body and the lower half. We're going to start the backswing with the lead shoulder. Remember, always the lead shoulder. We won't, don't want to be arms lifters. We want to turn. So you're going to turn the shirt in the backswing, turn the pants in the downswing. All of that is still going to relate to driver. Now, there's a few things that are going to help you hit driver longer, straighter, better. And these are the tips that I want to show you. Tip number one. Tip number one is T height. Now, if you look at today's new drivers, boy, oh boy, they look like Volkswagens on a stick, toasters on a stick, and it's really important that you have the proper T height because of how big these drivers are. Now, and every other club in your bag, that would be, this is all for full swing, of course, irons, hybrids, and fairy woods. You want to hit down on the ball, trap the ball, compress the ball. So you're trying to hit down on it, trap it, compress it. Driver is the one club in your bag you actually want to hit on the upswing. So if you want to hit this ball on the upswing, you have to make sure that ball is visible over the back of your driver because you're trying to hit up on it. I often see pl players tee up their driver and I can't see any of their ball or maybe just the tip of their ball over the back of the driver. If that's you, you're killing 20, 30 yards off your drive. This is what I need to see. I want to see about half the ball, about half the ball over the back of the driver. So when you tee it up, have your playing partners help you or even tee it up and then see if someone can take a picture to help you just to get a sense of what that tee height should be. But you want about half the ball over the back of the driver. Now, you'll notice if you watch me, I have the entire ball over the back of the driver. Please don't start there. If you've ever seen my driving swing, you'll see that in my driver, I get actually get up on my toes. Now, my coach, PG of Canada, and a professional Paul Horton, he saw that in me and he didn't change it. Now, it's not anything I teach. It's nothing that Paul would teach, but he's left it to me because it's natural. Bubba Watson, Lexi Thompson, Laura Davies, those are all golfers that go up on their toes when they, when they come through because they really use that leg strength. And because of key, the whole point of me teaching you turn the shirt, turn the skirt, or turn the shirt, turn the pants last week was to create coil and torque. And again, coil and torque is what's going to lead to distance. And especially with dry your strength, if you want to hit a golf ball longer, comes from your legs and your core, not your arms, okay? And again, last week, a key, key swing tip was that you want to think turn harder, 
not swing harder. I'm just going to do a shout out. I see that Thomas is watching. Thanks, Thomas. I'm thrilled you joined us in Marie, France. And I'm hoping to come to Moncton uh, and Halifax in September. So I'm hoping to come out to the Maritimes at that time, which I'm very excited about. All right. So number one we talked about was T height for driver was half the ball above. If you put the whole ball above, remember, I've taught you to brush what the ball is sitting on. So if the ball is sitting on grass in a fairway, you need to brush the grass. If the ball is sitting on sand in a greenside bunker, boy, oh boy, you better brush the sand or that ball is flying out. And the same thing goes with driver. If the ball is sitting on a tee, you want to brush the tee. If the whole ball is over the back of your driver, when you brush the tee, that ball is going to go straight up in the air and you're going to put an idiot mark on your club. Not cool. Not cool. No one wants uh, the idiot mark, the scratch mark on the top of their driver. So that's why start, please, with half a ball over the back of your driver. That's a great starting spot. So that's point number one. Point number two. Now, I've told you in previous lessons, there's many, many ways uh, to uh, get that ball to go long and straight. And there's not just one way in golf, but there are a few non-negotiables. One of the non-negotiables in golf is actually ball position for driver. So let me teach you ball position for driver. Now, I have showed you that ball position for every other club in your bag is the same ball position. Now, of course, you can do it where the ball position's in the middle and that you shift. That's one way to do it. The way that I've taught you is that you go feet together, make sure the ball is in the middle of your feet, move the lead foot, the width of a club head, or about three inches, back foot to comfort. I do that for every single club in my bag except driver, except driver. The driver a ball position is non-negotiable. Here is your trick. The trick to driver ball position, non-negotiable. It can only be in one spot, and that is off the instep of the lead foot. So the foot closest to the fairway. So that's my left foot for my right-handed golfers and right foot for my left-handed golfers. So here's your process. Remember, I'm a big fan of processes. I want you to stand, eyeball the ball in the middle of your feet like you do for the other ball position that I taught you in video one. But for driver, are you ready for this? For driver, you eyeball the ball in the middle of your feet and simply move the back foot. Then you know that the ball position is always off the instep of that lead foot. That is so key. Absolutely key that we make sure that ball position is on the, off the instep of the lead foot. Now, often I will be at corporate and charity golf tournaments and I'm watching golfers play. I watch golfers do this. They get up, they kind of pick their target, they do everything right in the pre-shot routine that I've taught you. Then they get ready to hit their driver and uh, they get ready to go. As you can see, the driver is almost halfway through my stance. You are losing, again, 20 to 30 yards minimum by having that ball position back. So ball position is absolutely key, especially for driver, because we want to hit up on that ball. That's why it needs to be forward in the stance. So just as a refresher, what you're going to do is you're going to go ball position, uh, eyeball the ball in the middle of your feet, simply move your back foot. Now, this next tip that I'm going to teach you is going to blow your mind. If you don't already do this, you are going to be so excited to learn that. And that is the importance of fanning your lead foot. What do I mean by fanning your lead foot? Now, here in the ball position process, I want you to stand feet together, simply uh, move the back foot for driver. The next thing I want you to do, I want you to fan your front foot. You're going to fan your front foot to about a 45 degree angle, not 180, just 45 degree angle and watch the difference that it makes. I'm going to face this way to show you. All right, so check this out. If I stand with my feet dead straight, so feet together, simply move the back foot, both my feet are dead straight. If I do that, and now I make a swing, and now I make a swing, the furthest I can turn is my belt buckle is facing the corner of this simulator. Now, the only change I'm gonna make, I'm gonna put feet together, move the back foot, and I'm simply going to fan the front foot, okay? So feet together, I'm gonna move the back foot, simply, Fan the front foot to 45 degrees. That's the only change I've made. Now I'm going to make a swing. Now my belt buckle is facing halfway through the wall of the simulator. I have gained 45 degrees of turn and all I did was fan the front foot. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to hit your golf balls longer, what leads to more distance? The ability to create more coil and torque. So fanning that foot is so, so important. Why? It makes it so much easier for us to turn the guts. Remember last week I told you, turn the lead hip, turn the lead pocket, turn the belt buckle, turn the guts, whatever it is that makes you turn. Look how much easier it is to turn when you fan that front foot. So by fanning that front foot, it's gonna take a lot of pressure off that lead leg, especially your knee, anyone who has knee injuries, oh boy, you're gonna love it. It'll take a ton of pressure off your lead knee. 
Now, I've asked my PGA of Canada coach, Paul Horton, I said, okay, what if my students have two bad knees? He said, if they have two bad knees, they can absolutely fan both feet out to 45 degrees, or if they have bad, a bad back or bad hips, or as we age, we lose flexibility. So in those instances, go ahead and fan both feet, or at least try it, give it a try. But if you are 100% healthy, simply fan the front foot, the foot closest to the fairway by 45 degrees. I promise you, you'll gain 45 degrees more turn. What does more turn lead to? More club head speed, more ball speed, and longer shots with every single club in your bag, not just driver. You're gonna love it. All right. I also see that Jean Willard Young has joined us that she loves the tips come to Maine I do love Maine and I do love lobsters so I'm coming Jean and Tammy Richards uh, from Michigan I believe Tammy thank you so much for joining us and Judy uh, this will definitely help your front knee I am telling you Judy you're gonna love it by fanning that front foot so again if you struggle at all with injuries uh, bad knees bad hips bad back or you lack flexibility experiment with fanning both feet but my I, I do this and just so you all know I don't just do this with driver I do this with every club in my bag. So every club in my bag, whether it's an iron, where I, where I would simply take my ball and I'd eyeball the ball in the middle of my feet and I would go uh, feet together, move the lead foot the width of the club head, back foot to comfort, then I fan. I don't want you to fan at first because then your whole body turns. You have to do it at the end. And the driver is simply feet together, eyeball the ball in the middle of the feet, Simply move your back foot, then you fan to a 45. Again, don't turn that body, just fan the foot. It is a game changer. You're gonna love it and hit it longer and straighter. So I'm very excited. So for driver, our tip so far, tee up the ball, uh, at least half or about half the ball should be showing over the back of the driver and ball position. Absolutely key to make sure it's only non-negotiable off the instep of your lead foot. Now, what are the other tips for driver? Now, driver is the longest club in your bag, so tempo, tempo, tempo is so important. Now, tempo is important to all parts of your full swing, but let me give you a great tempo swing thought that's really gonna help you with all your clubs, but especially with driver. So here's your new tempo swing thought. So with driver, again, it's really long, so the, longest, the longer your club, the more club head speed you're gonna generate, but the harder it is to hit. So again, you want to maximize that distance by allowing your body to turn as much as possible. Those of you who want speed, sometimes I find that you haven't even finished your backswing and you're already transitioning to your downswing. Boy, oh boy, if you start your downswing too early, you're just losing coil and torque. You're losing distance. So allow your body to turn as much as humanly possible. Slow, patient backswing. Your speed should never be on the backswing, only on the downswing. Slow, patient backswing. So this is what I like to think. I like to think Two beats in the backswing, one in the downswing. Two beats in the backswing, one in the downswing. Let me demonstrate to you. So when I'm making a backswing, again, whether it's with an iron, hybrid, fairy wood or driver, I'm thinking two beats in my backswing. <sighs> Always take my deep breath out. <sighs> one, two, and then one in my downswing. So that would look like this. Let's do it one more time again. Two beats in my backswing. <sighs> one, two, three. So again, here's a great little swing thought to, to think about. How do I do two beats in my backswing, one in my downswing? I like to think of sweet swing in South African golfer Ernie Els. So he is just amazing. Beautiful golf swing. I use his name, actually. So I use er, knee. That's two beats. Er, knee, Els in my downswing. So let me hit a ball while I do that with you. Here we go. Slow, patient backswing. That's we need to load up as much as possible. That's where our distance is going to come from. Here we go, slow, so feet together, simply move the back foot, fan the front foot. Here we go. Earth, knee, elves. And as you can see, that slow patient backswing and the speed comes in the downswing. Now remember, the worst thing you can do is swing harder. I no longer want you to think swing harder. Remember, it's turn harder, not swing harder. I'm gonna hit another one for you. Turn harder, not swing harder. Let's do it again here. Slow patient backswing. All right, here we go. Er, elves. And again, that speed comes on the downswing. Turn harder, not swing harder. I guarantee you're gonna hit your driver farther and all your clubs farther. You're gonna love that swing thought. All right, I see Heather Ogilvie's joined us. That's fantastic. Debbie Bullard, I'm, I, I'm short and do you have a set for a short person or regular? Great question. Uh, Debbie, you wanna get fitted. 
Clubs are so personal. The other thing is, I've had a guy that's six foot two, but when he stood beside me, our fingertips were the exact same uh, distance as we had our arms uh, hanging beside our body. So really, it's really important that you get fitted by a professional fitter. Really, really important because everyone's bodies, it depends on how long your torso is, how long your legs are, how long your arms are. So just because you're short doesn't necessarily mean that you need a totally different set of golf clubs. It's really important that you get fitted by a professional fitter. So make sure you do that. And don't forget, I'm also a huge fan. Please go see your PJ of Canada pros for, for uh, help and tips and advice. You heard me talk earlier about the divorce open in a previous video when people take tips from their spouse. Now the spouse, bless their heart, is trying to help. But if you want to get better, make, so you, make sure you see your PJ of Canada pro. You can go to pjofcanada.com, click in the top bar, find a pro. You can type in city. You can type if you would like a male or female pro. You can type if, what facility you'd like it to be at. And uh, it's a phenomenal resource. Make sure you work with your PJ of Canada pros. I also want to see, I see Denise Downey. Hi Lisa, you're awesome. Thanks Denise and Sue Reinhardt Franklin. You're awesome from Mesa, Arizona. Oh, day makers, the day makers ladies. Thank you so much. All right, so let's go through the driver. Again, we've got half the ball over the back of the driver. Ball positions off the instep of the lead foot. And then now remember that tempo swing thought, er, knee, L's. And again, we're always fanning that front foot. So those are the big, big, big keys for driver that, that are a little bit different or more important, again, that you're thinking of, especially that tempo of Ernie L's. Let that driver load up for maximum distance. Now, what's the fastest way? If, if all of you are thinking, I want to hit my driver farther. Lisa, how do I do that? Let me tell you, the fastest way to hit your driver farther, hit it in the center of the club face. Hit it on the sweet spot. You want to hit it on the sweet spot. Well, how do you know if you hit it on the sweet spot? best $5. I'm asking every single one of you to head out to your shopper's drug mart or Walmart, your local pharmacy. What you're going to do, you're going to go buy yourself a can of foot spray. They're about five, can five, five bucks or so. You're going to give it a little shake. What you're going to do is you're going to spray the face of your driver. Now don't spray it really tight and close. Give it about a, it's just a mist. You just want to leave a mist. You don't want to leave a caked or coated uh, front. So a little, little shake here. Give it, but be about a foot away. Give a little mist, just a little mist. On, on, on the driver, so it's just a light mist. It's not caked, as I said. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna make a swing and see, heck, where are you hitting this golf ball? Because again, the fastest way to distance is hit the center of the club face. Let's give it a go here. All right, we're gonna tee up that ball, doing all the things, turn the shirt, turn the pants, brush the grass, finish that golf swing with some Ernie L's. Feet together, move the back foot, fan the front foot. Here we go. Oh, let's take a look. Oh, not bad, not bad. I'm a little bit, can you see here? Just a sec, my impact mark is a little bit off the toe. I probably lost about 10 yards. I probably lost at least 10, maybe 15 yards from being a little more on the toe than versus the middle of the, versus the, middle of the face. So I never counted on just one swing. What I'll do is I'll make three or four swings. If they're all off that toe area, if they're all off that toe area, then I would go, oh shoot, Lisa, maybe you're standing about an inch too far away from the ball. If all my shots are on the heel, maybe I'd think, oh, maybe I'm standing a little close to the ball. If they're all way up high here, maybe I'm teeing my ball too high. If they're way down low here, maybe I'm teeing the ball too low. So you can learn so much from, uh, from using that spray on your club face. And you can use it on your irons, your hybrids, your fairy wood, and immediately see where you're striking it. I've heard of people putting duct tape or tape on the driver. It just leaves a sticky residue. This is great. You just take your towel afterwards, take your towel, give it a wipe, and then do a fresh layer when you no longer know where the last, uh, uh, the last impact marked was. So those are some really big keys for driver, and I promise you they will help you hit that driver longer or straighter better. All right, so we've talked about some really important keys for driving. Now we need to move into the, that's the long game, the longest part of the long game. Let's talk about the shortest part of the short game, and that is putting. Putting is you will make more strokes with your putter than any other club in your bag. This, this, this uh, piece of equipment is so important, again, because you will use it more times in a round than any other club. So this has to be fitted. Now, the number one thing that I find with putter, I find most putters, most putters, for, for ladies are not fitted properly. Why? Because as ladies, we often got our first putter, maybe from our dad, our grandpa, an uncle, a brother, maybe a spouse. And so usually the putters are too long. Now, when a putter is too long for you, the problem with that is you can't get your eyes over the ball. So it's really important that you have your putter fitted for you. And this is an easy fix. Well, you can easily take this. 
uh, you can easily take this where you take the top of the grip off, off your, the, the putter, the fitter, the fitter can do this for you. Uh, take the, the top, uh, take your grip off. They can cut it down and then they can put the grip back on. It doesn't make it stiffer. I never recommend cutting down irons or full, full length clubs. That will make your club extra stiff. That's a terrible thing to do for juniors. Don't do that. Don't cut your clubs down. But with putter, it's okay. Putter, you have a professional fitter. Take off the grip. They can cut it to your length and put it down. They can also, what, what is also great about, uh, having your putter fitted, and this can be with your current putter. It doesn't mean you need a brand new putter they can adjust adjust the lie angle so they can bring the toe up or down to help you roll it properly and also the loft the loft of your putter who knew the putter had loft everyone must have thought it was dead flat not true having a little bit of loft on your putter also helps roll it properly so that needs to match your stroke so I'm a huge fan of getting your putter fitted uh, 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 by a professional fitter it, it is night and day difference night and day difference to make sure you get that done now here's something you want to know about putters when you're picking a putter I have been a blade putter so this is called a blade putter it's more of a rectangular shape this is like your standard traditional putter I've used a blade putter for almost all the years I've been golfing and then last year I have to tell you I never thought I would switch but I actually switched to what we would call a mallet putter and uh, the mallet putter for me I just found that this shape and design worked so well for me and and the great thing about putters nowadays is there's so many different alignment features like this one has what we call a two ball and and triple track so it's got a different alignments almost all putters have those those lines on the front to help you uh, or on the top of the putter should I say to help you uh, line up uh, the, the sweet spot of the putter. So check out all the different alignment lines and aids that you can have. But just because you've been using one putter for 5, 10, 15, 20 years doesn't mean it's the best putter. So I've dropped my st strokes tremendously for me when I tr experimented with different putters. So again, always uh, check to see, is that the right putter for you? Typically, there's two types of strokes in putting. Uh, in putting, there's typically either a straight back, straight back or straight through stroke or slightly what we call an arced stroke. And that means that you kind of arc around your body and arc around your body the other way. Often, so the mallet putter would be best for your straight back, straight through putters. And if you're more of an arc putter, then you'd probably prefer the uh, blade putter. So again, it just depends on your swing style. Go see your professional fitter or PGA of Canada, PGA of America uh, uh, pro, and they will definitely help you uh, determine that, okay? Uh, now, so uh, first of all, you have to decide what kind of putter you like. Now let's talk about the fundamentals of putting. What will make you a better putter? Putting fundamental number one, you must create a triangle. What do I mean by a triangle? A triangle is from one shoulder to the other shoulder to the base of your hands. So this is your triangle. In proper putting, what you want to do is you simply want to rock your shoulders. Notice my lower body is not moving at all. In putting, you should never have sway. There should never be sway. It, the lower body should be stiff stiff and, and quiet and the upper body is turning you're, you're turning your core and you're just simply rocking your shoulders rocking your shoulders okay really really important that's a huge fundamental in putting I, I see we've got lots of people watching I just want to say hi to Sally Mazur Sylvia Johnson Terry Carr and Craig Perry thanks everyone for, for watching us here all right so the fundamentals of putting first putting fundamental as I said is the triangle the second putting fundamental is you want to have tempo back to tempo what we just learned with driver here's your tempo Tempo. You need to have a tempo swing thought of this, tick tock, tick tock. And the reason why you need to have that is because we don't want to rush our putting stroke. Nothing about it should be fast and hard. This isn't slow patient back quick through. No, tempo, tick tock. Now maybe your tick tock goes tick tock. That's fine. Someone else's tick tock might be tick tock talk but it has to be the same tempo back the same tempo through you don't want to create speed in your in your in, in your stroke you want to have tempo so again there's your, think of a metronome think of a metronome if you ever played piano tick tock tick tock so with the put we need the we need the putting the triangle and then we need a tempo tick tock tick talk now second thing we need to do is make sure when we're putting have our eyes over the ball again my PG of Canada coach Paul Horton he said that most players should have their eyes directly over the ball some players like it a little bit inside the ball totally fine but if your putter's too long you're not gonna have your eyes over the ball and you're gonna be missing putts all day long just because your putter's too long so again really make sure you have your eyes over ball here's a little trick to see if your eyes are over the ball what you can do is you can have a ball down on the ground you can set up in your proper putting position Set up in your proper putting posture. Take your ball over, the, over your eye, and then you're going to drop it 
And if it hits your ball like it did right there, then you know that your eye is on top of the ball. So that's fantastic. So you really want to make sure you have your eyes over the ball, or as my coach Paul Horton said, maybe slightly inside is fine too, but that's where the ball position or the eye position should be. Now, what about ball position? Now, this is interesting. Most people in putting default to a center of the stance put, putting position. My coach Paul Horton says, no, no, no. You want to help roll the ball. You want to help hit the ball uh, and allow it to roll instead of bounce and skip along the green. So so he suggests that you have that ball positioned slightly forward in your stance. So not dead center of the stance, but towards the lead foot. So towards the lead foot and make sure your eye. Now, for those of you who did the dominant eye drill, do you remember the triangle drill that we did? If you, if you haven't seen that video, go back to, it'll be, I think, I believe it was my second video where I did the alignment, where we did the triangle drill, do the triangle drill. And I like to have my dominant eye over the ball. That's what I like to do. So give it a try. I, I think it's really going to help your putting big time there. So that's really important. Now, next part about putting, putting fundamentals. We've talked about the importance of creating the triangle. No lower body movement, no sway. We talked about tempo. Tick, tock. Tick, talk. Now we've talked about ball position should be slightly ahead of center towards the lead toe and your eye, uh, eye hopefully dominant eye would be my preference, would be over, over the golf ball. Those will all set you up for success. What's the next part that we need to do uh, to think about for putting? The next part we need to think about for putting uh, also is, is alignment. So when I talk about alignment, when you look at uh, most of the ball manufacturers, they actually come with a, uh, uh, they come with a line on it. Oh, doo -doo -doo -doo. I'm trying to turn this here to show you. Most of them come with a line on it, often like two arrows on the side, on the side of the line. This is actually, you, this is actually here, especially if there's arrows on the side to help you line up your putt. If you watch the Masters a couple weekends ago, you'll notice that several players actually had a line drawn on the top of, uh, draw, drawn over that line. So even though there is a line, many players will take a black Sharpie, uh, and draw a line, uh, a little darker over that line to help them line it up. So again, you will have seen many of those players use that. And then what you can do is when you're lining up your putt, uh, you always put your ball marker down. So put your ball marker down behind your ball. And then I like to tuck low. I find that you can read greens better when you tuck low instead of up here. So I like to tuck low and get a sense of it. If you poured a bucket of water on the green, how would the water fall? So what you're trying to look for is what we call the apex of the break. What's the apex of the break? The high point where you want to aim your ball at, and then the ball will roll towards the cup. Now this, again, there's, there's not a perfect science to it. You will have seen many of the uh, uh, several players at, at the Masters as well using Aimpoint. And so Aimpoint's a green reading system. If you're someone who's a numbers person, accountant, engineer, you might love Aimpoint. So that's something as long as you're quick. Pace of play is my only comment is make sure you're quick about it. But that will help you if you, if you really struggle with green, green reading. Uh, another way, and this was a great putting tip that I got from Steve Elkington, PGA major winner. He told me that when uh, we were in a match together, a three hole match, and on the first hole, I putted my ball and I missed, I missed on the low side of the cup. And he said, Ah, oh, you missed on the am side of the cup, Lisa. And I'm like, the am side of the cup? He's like, yeah, pros miss on the high side, amateurs miss on the low side. And ever since that day, every time I'm reading a green, I tuck low and I look to see, is there a high side of the cup? Now there might not be, it might be dead flat, but if there's a high side of the cup, I'm always trying to putt to that high side. So again, if you have that line, you can aim that line at the high side of the cup or at the apex of the break and then make your stroke uh, that, that would help you uh, roll that putt in. So I think that that's really important. I see that Carol, uh, she is, is no getting low at her age. Hey, I get that too. If you saw Tiger, he struggled with his injuries getting low too. So just a, if you can get just a little bit lower just to get, I find that that's helpful. But if not, I bet you have a great set of eyes. Uh, I see a Lou Ray that you love my lessons. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And uh, Lorraine says, will you, uh, I, I'm coming to Prince Edward Island. Yes, for Women's Golf Day. There is a waiting list if you call PEA, PEI's Finest Golf. They've got a waiting list going for Women's Golf Day on June 7th. So thanks for asking, Lorraine. Lorraine. Lorraine, sorry about that. All right, so let's talk about some more fundamentals with putting that I promise you will change your game. So I used to have quite a few three putts in a round and I found it really frustrating. I'd be on a par five and two and then three putt for par. Now I know, wow, 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 Lisa, right? But if you really want to go low, ladies and gentlemen, you know that the first, the easiest way to go low, improve your putting. That's the easiest way to go low. So for me, this, is, this was a game changer. Are you ready for this? I promise you this will change your putting game if you're not already doing this. So for me, when I used to be putting, what I would do is I would make a putt, I'd make a putt, and let's say I made my stroke and the ball rushed past the hole, it was way past the hole. Then I'd say to myself, ah, Lisa, you hit it too hard. All right. So then I'd make another stroke. 
here we go. I babied it a little bit. Oh, and it was way short of the cuff. And then I'd be like, oh, Lisa, you, you know, you hit it too soft. You hit it too soft. So then my next putt, well, I have to hit it a little harder than my last one, but not as hard as my first one. No, 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 no. That is not measurable. If you want to become a good putter, I am all about measurable. Remember processes. That's why all these lesson series, I'm talking to you about processes. Here's the process that I use. So processes, get rid of, no longer ever say to yourself, I hit that putt too hard. I hit that putt too soft. I now want you to think about length of stroke, not hard, not soft. Hard and soft isn't measurable. Uh, length of stroke is measurable. So here's what I do. So what I do is when I get to a, a golf course, and again, whether you're a member at one course and, and play that course uh, every day all year long, or whether you play all different courses, here's the thing, that, that green is going to be different, or the greens on the golf course will be different in the morning than they are at lunchtime than they are in the late evening. So before my round of golf, I always go out to the putting green, and what I do is I, I, I look for three kind of what I call benchmarks. What are my benchmarks? I will make a putt, my first stroke, I'm again, I'm I'm going to be thinking tempo tick tock this doesn't work unless you keep the same tempo and my first benchmark will be big toe to big toe so I go tick tock big toe to big toe so I make that putt tick tock big toe to big toe and I see how long that putt goes maybe that's a four foot putt okay then my next benchmark I try I'm gonna go from big toe to big toe I'm gonna go pinky toe to pinky toe pinky toe to pinky toe and again the only way that works is if you go tick talk you can't go tick tock because that's not going to keep it the same and measurable so it's got to be the same tempo big toe to big toe then i go pinky toe to pinky coat toe and then my third benchmark i usually go one foot past to one foot through here we go so i go one foot past to one foot through and again i'm going tick tock so tick talk and only rocking my shoulders. Now my first ball would typically be about, let's call it four, four feet. Let's say my, that was my big toe to big toe. My pinky toe to pinky toe could be six feet and my one foot pass to one foot pass could be nine feet. So I actually, I actually pace it out. So I will pace out to see it's one, two, three, four, five, five feet past my, uh, my big toe to big toe would be my five foot putt. So I actually pace it out on the practice putting green before my round so that I know that my benchmark on that course, on that day, that my big toe to big toe is my five foot putt, my pinky toe to pinky toe is my seven foot putt, and my one foot pass to my one foot pass is my nine foot putt. And that is a, that's, it's a game changer. And then when I make a putt through the day, so let's say I go big toe to big toe and I blast, let's do a, a putt here. I'm gonna do a putt right here. I'm gonna go big toe to big toe. Here we go, tick tock, big toe to big toe, and I'm way past the cup, then I say to myself, oh shoot, I took too long of a stroke. Not too hard of a stroke, too long of a stroke. So then my next stroke, I would think I need to make a slightly shorter stroke. Not softer, because that's not measurable, shorter. So having those benchmarks, I start with big toe to big toe, pinky toe to pinky toe, one foot past to one foot past, I then walk it out, measure how far that putt is that day. Now, of course, this only works on a flat part of the green. So, of course, if there's hills, you might have to add or subtract a little bit. But I always do it on a flat part of the green. And if I'm actually putting, if there's hills, then I might add um, a little bit more length in my stroke or shorten the length of my stroke, depending if it's an uphill or downhill. I am telling you, game changer. It almost eliminated my three putts from my round absolutely brilliant uh donna great tips checking in from saskatchewan well hopefully that snow is melting it's snowing in calgary today so hopefully it's nice and warm there and i see kathy woods watson is also watching thank you so much so again that is going to be a game changer for you if you start thinking length of stroke not uh how hard you hit it how soft you hit it so key 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 to all of that so i hope that you've enjoyed these tips we've given you lots of tips on driver and on putting so you're gonna hopefully blast it to the next stratosphere the next time you play golf and sink it in one get many one putts out there I want to see lots of one and two putts and let's get rid of those three putts this year so if you want to review any of this I will be posting this video right to the golf town Facebook page my Facebook page at Lisa Longball and also the uh, golf town uh, YouTube channel and my YouTube channel at Lisa Longball if you want to find anything out about what I'm doing my golf schools and any of my appearances that's at lisalongball.com so feel free to check out my website and if you want to find out any information on that and I can't wait to see you all next week super exciting I can't believe that next week is going to be our last class our last class of our five classes but we're going to have an amazing time i can't wait till next week and don't forget if you've missed any of the videos go back and check them out i hope you have a fabulous week everyone thanks for joining me bye everyone